It's December 28th, Thursday. Uh, it's about 7.30 in the morning here at the West End Gun Club. I'm at the Rimfire Range again. Uh, this is pretty much the only day I have to shoot all this week, even though I have the entire week off until the 2nd of January. And uh, I've just got a lot of other things going on, uh, non-shooting related, so took this morning to come out to the range, and obviously it's windy. Um, it, every time I'm coming out here during this time of year, it's just gonna be windy, I guess. Um, unfortunately, I'm shooting rimfire again, so which means this wind is not going to be too well, considering I'm gonna be zeroing in a new scope. Um, so I'm gonna set up my target, and we're gonna bust out the rifle. As you can see here, I have the CZ455, uh, the same rifle I've been shooting in the past several weeks. But the difference between uh, the time that you last saw it at the last range vlog at that 22 match and now is the new scope and rings and technically the base. But the scope is a Vortex Optics Viper PST Gen 2 5 to 25 by 50 uh, EBR2C MRAD. I, I finally, I had the Razer HD Gen 2 on here earlier, but I finally, I needed to put a scope on here because the uh, Razer HD Gen 2, the short parallax is only 32 yards, I think, and I needed something that comes down 25, so I went ahead and shelled out for a new scope and went with the uh, Viper PSD Gen 2. Since it has similar turrets in terms of uh, the external feel to the Razer line, Although the zero stop is different and we'll find out in a few seconds or a few moments when I try to zero this thing in and set the zero stop. But it has the same external features so I just kind of wanted to stick to that without buying another razor. And uh, I put the American Rifle Company M10 rings on here. And then I ha this is technically a new base. This is the Area 419 base but what had happened is they, they sort of machined the the top incorrectly it's just slightly so if you had rings that weren't designed flat um, the Seekins rings the vortex rings these rings um, most rings out there are going to be fine with that base but if you had some rings that weren't exactly flat on the top in the in the angle side it wouldn't fit correctly so area 419 um, sent out a notice and they said they're gonna for all the people with the initial run who bought the initial run of bases they went ahead and, uh, you know, re redesigned or fixed that issue, made some new bases and shipped them out to us. And they gave us a return mailer label to ship back the old one. And so this is what it is, or that's what I have on here now. So pretty cool Vera 419 um, to resolve that issue for us. And then uh, at no charge. But we're gonna go ahead and get this sucker zeroed in and we'll see how it goes. So with the Razor turrets, the LTEC turrets, basically you just take off or you remove the set screws and then you can uh, remove, when you take off the top like cap cover and then remove the set screws, you can move the internal adjustments and then set, put the set screws back on and then just cover the top and that's how you set your zero stop. This one is, has a couple extra steps. So basically we have to back out these set screws on the, I guess they call this RZR turrets, but basically we're gonna remove the set screws from the external RZR turrets. Once you get that off, you back them out, you can just lift off the external turret. Then you have another set of uh, set screws on the inside, so you have to set, take these set screws off. And then you can make the adjustments. Just to note, before you do this, you're supposed to run down the turrets um, all the way down so that the bottom's out. That's, I already did that when I was at home and I did a bore sight. Uh, but I'm just showing off how you actually set the zero stop 
mechanism now. And I think we're high at 25, so I need to come down. Come down a full mil. Let's see how that is. <clears throat> Still another mill. Let's come down a mill and a half, actually. I think we're on. I think we're okay. So once you're dialed in, apparently what's gonna happen is I'm gonna tighten down the set screws, put the turret back on, and that's gonna be my zero stop. The flaw in that is you're bottomed out right at that point. So this, if this is my short distance right now, my zero distance, I can't go below that. The Razor l -Tech turrets have half a mil built in. So even though you zero it down, you bottom it out and put it to the zero line, they actually give you uh, five tenths of a mil extra on the bottom just in case there's some you know elevation variances depending on where you're shooting <clears throat> and I like that so to get that same that same feature here what I'm going to do is set my zero but then I'm going to dial it up half a minute then I'm going to tighten down the set screws put this on tighten down the set screws and that should give me the half minute um, extra at the bottom end but we'll just test that theory. Let me just verify my zero and we'll put it all back together. <clears throat> so just to give a close up of the turrets, um, the uh, zero stop mechanism, pretty much I, my zero was right at where the zero mark was for 25 yards. It just coincidentally, right? So to get me that extra little bit of um, five tenths of a mil uh, leeway on the zero stop so it doesn't bottom out right at that zero point, I uh, set my zero, which happened to be at zero, and then I dialed down uh, five tenths of a mil. And so I'm gonna put this turret cap on. Technically you're supposed to put the turret cap like this where the uh, zero is right here but instead I'm gonna put it on right exactly here to match that point. So that gives me that extra five tenths of a mil to back out of. I've already bottomed out the, uh, the internal turret uh, set screws, so I'm gonna go ahead and dial this on. I just wanna line everything up from behind here. Make sure we're bottomed out. Let me go ahead and tighten the set screws. I've got everything zeroed in. I wasn't, sh I'm not exactly sure if I did it correctly when I was trying to set that five tenths uh, extra on the back end, but I do have uh, seven tenths built in right there. Everything, or eight tenths roughly built in, seven tenths. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven tenths. So I'm not sure if I did it correctly, but it seems like everything's correct. Um, so we'll stick with that. And I'm not entirely, I don't know the specs on this scope, but I should have three tenths, or four mils, five mils, six mils, seven mils, eight mils. 9 mils, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, about 1.9, or sorry, 19 mils, 19 mils, correction. 
19 mils with a uh, 30 minute base. So uh, we're gonna stretch it out to 50 and then get some zeros there and then um, try 75 and 100. I'm gonna back it out to the top of the uh, top of the berms over there and we'll we'll get some zeros, at least some elevation zeros. And I think I might go ahead and uh, adjust my windage. I got kind of don't want to touch the windage considering it's uh, actually I do need to touch the windage. I have the it set to right. I need to come a full mill over. So we'll go ahead and set that up before we stretch it out to 50. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot a few rounds at 50 and we'll shoot some at 75 and 100, maybe 85. Um, simply because the distances we shot for that, uh, the, that NRL 22, Club 22 match, we had uh, varying distances at 25, I think 35, 50, 65, 75, 85, and 100. I think 90 yards as well. So I'm going to try to get some, just, uh, some rough zeros at those distances and write them down just so I have that dope recorded. So obviously the great thing about having this scope is the fact that I have parallax now at 25 yards. Before with that Razer HD Gen 2, it's a great scope, um, obviously overkill for a 22, but it only had parallax, minimum parallax of like 32 yards, I think, or 27, whatever. It was just not low enough to get to 25. So it's nice to have this with a short range parallax. And right now it's kind of odd that I'm finding my 25 and my 50 yard zeros are exactly the same, the elevation. Not sure why that is, but it appears to be the case here. Yeah, my 25 and my 50 yard zeros are basically the same. One thing I didn't mention uh, during my last range vlog at that 22 match is, while I did put that Razer HD Gen 2 on that gun, I did make one slight modification to this rifle uh, at that same time. Uh, I modified the trigger with the, um, the Yo Dave, triggers uh spring trigger kit i guess uh it's actually pretty i don't want to say easy you can pick it up it's there's a couple of pins you got to take out then you add some shims like a little shim that goes around the pin and, and you can replace some springs in general you figure it out uh just go online see some tutorials but i first put the second lightest there's like four state four different spring weights like really light light i guess light to heavy and so I was using the second lightest and that did not engage the sear enough. So I tried the second heaviest with the thickest shim and that was enough uh, to get safe sear engagement. And it breaks under two pounds. I can't remember what I have it at. I think it, I weighed it at one and a half roughly, double check. But it's significantly better from the stock trigger, zero creep whatsoever. Um, and so it, it's a really good spring kit and I think the total cost of that was under 40 bucks. I can't recall the price, but it was cheap. $20, $25 uh, compared to buying a brand new trigger. And uh, I think I'm happy with the way this tr uh, the Yodave trigger kit uh, is working out. The, uh, the OEM trigger, the factory trigger, it was too heavy, four pounds. And uh, I mean, I could shoot that, but it's just not comfortable to shoot that over time and for accuracy. But there's also this condition where if you had the gun on safe and you take it off safe and then you kind of pull on the trigger slowly, 
there's some sl take up. There's like this little creep before it hits the, uh, the wall. Um, and I can kind of replicate that even without going on safe. But I, I don't know, some weird condition. Occasionally, if I cycle the bolt and I pull really slow and apply pressure, I can get that little creep to come out and it'll hit the wall and then it'll break. And I didn't really like that, that uh, condition, especially when you're trying to engage that trigger uh, smoothly and trying to, to apply as you know that just the right amount of pressure before you know you want to break it and pull through so having any sort of creep in any kind of condition if it's a, even if it's just uh, infrequent it's just not something I can have in the trigger so really liking this yo drave trigger kit um, on the factory trigger it's working out really well <clears throat> so looking at my notes for some reason I did have five tenths of a mil up from my 25 yard zero to get to 50, but today I didn't have to move the, the scope. Um, based on my notes from the last match, I did need 0.7 up from zero to get to 65, I think. So we'll see if that's what I need. And if you saw me setting up those targets at 65 and 50, um, or 65 and 75 rather, uh, it is at an incline. Uh, this this uh, rimfire range only goes out to like 25 and 50 and then it goes out farther, but it's all on these berms. But I did laze this. I mean, we lazed them at the last match, so it's just at the angle, corrected angle distance. So this should be a true 65 straight to target. So it looks like I only need half a minute. I'm not sure if it's my gun because it's shooting dirty, but I've got about 100, maybe 200 rounds through it now. Maybe it shoots different dirty than clean. Because during the match I shot it dirty, or shot it clean rather. But I don't think that'll make too much of a difference as far as zeros are concerned. So it looks like we need half a minute for 65 yards. So right now it looks like I need a tenth of a mil, or sorry, one mil for 75 and only Half or 65. No weird conditions today, based uh, compared to my last uh, my zeros for the last match. Um, even though it's a different scope, you'd think it would perform the same as far as drops. We'll write all this down. So I got a couple targets at 90 and 100 yards. Uh, try to figure out where we're at here. I um, think I was needing 1.2 last time, but uh, could be different this time. But we'll see what goes. So it's kind of, I mean, shooting at an upward angle like this is, is awkward because you got to run your rest or your bipod higher. And especially from prone, it's just terrible shooting that at the match last time uh, at an angle. Definitely need more than that, so 1.5 maybe. It's funny, you can just see the arc of the bullet in the scope. Yeah, it looks like I need 
Group isn't all that great. Um, three of them drop fairly low compared to the rest of the group. Not sure if that's just, again, it's windy conditions. Could just be this gun or this ammo. But uh, I think 1.5 is what I need for 90 yards, roughly. And then I'm shooting on a two inch paster. And I think at 100, I didn't need much more last time, like 1.7. I could be wrong. But we'll see. Nine looks right. Oh, drifted way left. The wind is getting squirrely. Uh, but generally, I'm going to stick with 1.8 for 100 yards. Seems about right. What's really scaring me though is that 50, the 25 to 50 yard zero difference. Why I didn't have to move the turrets is beyond me. Um, but I guess that's how it works. In the last range vlog during the match, you probably saw me using this Armageddon gear game changer bag. I can't remember the exact name, but I think it's called Optimized Game Changer or OG. This. This is based on the original design. They had one called the Game Changer, then they came out with a, a revised version that a lot of people didn't like. And then they came out with the OG, so they started reproducing or uh, remanufacturing the original design. So this is basically a, uh, a bag. It's kind of like a wedge design, sort of, in terms of a dual wedge. And you have like two compartments here, and they're bridged together, so you can kind of move, the pellets can move back and forth. But essentially what this does is it basically, uh, the weight of the both sides, when you, when you press down on this with something else, it ends up clamping on, a, on whatever you're resting it on, whether it's like a pole or even a railing or something, or a tree branch, or anything of that nature. So it's really handy and it is a stable design. Um, it's pretty nice. It is 100 bucks, which is expensive for a, a, a bag, essentially, filled with pellets. But, uh, it's pretty cool, and I and I find it uh, very uh, good to use for both uh, rifle shooting in sort of tactical set precision matches, or even for photography um, to rest a camera on. If you want to rest a long a camera or a heavy telephoto lens on something, if you don't have a tripod, you can rest it even on the ground. Uh, this provides a nice rest. And the versatility of this bag, you can run it, uh, depending on where you're, the, the object you're going to rest on, it could, you can run it lengthwise or you can run it sideways, whatever works for you or works best for the given situation. Uh, it'll still provide a fairly stable position. Uh, for this type of pole here though, I would most likely go this route simply because you want this longer ledge. Even though I have a short forend, I can just sort of wedge this in there between my bipod and my magazine.
uh, just to show off the targets, which isn't really much um, as far as showing you anything worthwhile, but uh, this is just zeroing in at 25, uh, obviously setting the razor zero stop. Um, just a bunch of messing around with um, trying to get the zero stop fine tuned. Uh, this is where it gets interesting though, um, these bomb targets. I believe this was 65, and this was these were 100 yards. So this, sorry, no, this was 75. These were 100 yards. And uh, 75, it kind of tended toward this part of the target. I did have to adjust, uh, come left significantly because the wind was blowing it to the right. Uh, then 100 yards, I was sort of shifting it around here. And this is the last 100 yard group I shot. Um, when I was putting pressure on the bipod, this is where it kind of landed. But if I kind of let it free recoil or just slightly put pressure forward, it tended towards this line here. So I'm not entirely sure if it was just truly the bipod pressure or preload or if it was actual wind, but this is at 100 yards. Um, then my other target that I had set up, I think the only interesting part of this is um, this was, I believe, 65 and this was 90 yards. Again, it's kind of pretty wild here. Um, notice how it's sort of tended towards here. Then I dropped a couple here. Um, bit squirrely at 90 yards. This is a 65. That's pretty easy. Um, it's just up and down grouping. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how I have the scope set up right now. So I'm pretty much done for the day. Packed up all my gear. About to head out of the range. The uh, 22 firing line. Uh, a couple more groups showed up because apparently all the bays are full. Um, it is uh, obviously it's Christmas holiday or the winter holiday break, so everyone or a lot of people have the you know this week off or a couple days off this week. So it figures every, you know you figure everyone's going to come to the range to to do some shooting. So that's why the bays are full. So since the bays are full, some guys are just waiting it out. So they came to the 22 line. Um, I was the only person there in the 22 range for for a solid uh, two and a half hours, I guess maybe three hours. Um, it, that's why I like the rimfire range here at the West End Gun Club. If you want to shoot rimfire and you want a nice quiet place to shoot, um, the rimfire range is great because hardly anyone uses it. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Got my scope sighted in. A little bit odd or finicky or, well not, odd, not finicky, but just a little strange that my 25 my 50 yard zeros are the same. Um, don't know what to say about that. Uh, but all in all, um, now I have my 22, my CZ455 uh, rig pretty much set up right now to shoot casual matches and whatnot. I would like to throw the uh, Masterpiece Arms chassis on it whenever I get a few, several hundred dollars of spare change to throw at it. But we'll see. I think it's 700 bucks, give or take, plus options. And uh, hopefully I can get that going, um, get that uh, rifle, or that chassis rather. Uh, that's pretty much it for the year though. Um, I don't think I'll be going to the range any time before the first. Um, not really much to do as far as shooting right now. I Pretty much all my guns are set up. Although I need to work on my Remington 700, what was in my ATA ICS chassis, that, the buttstock on that thing is loose, so I'd like to get a KRG, that new Bravo chassis, stock slash chassis, to, to move that barreled action into, and then I'm gonna have that AICS chassis worked on or repaired, and then I'm probably gonna sell it because I'm not really happy with that AICS anymore. After having tried the MPA and other chassis systems, I think the AICS is a little dated, in my opinion. Um, I do like the Masterpiece Arms much better as far as the chassis is concerned. Um, that or I'd rather just go back to a digital stock, like a McMillan A5 or maybe a Manners stock. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much, as far as my projects are concerned, I have nothing else going on. So. Nothing else to really work on at this point, just all casual shooting from this point forward until I decide to get the custom, another custom action. I'm thinking about getting a, mouse, uh, a Defiance, rather, Defiance Deviant. Um, we'll think about that for our next project. Anyway, that's it for this range vlog. Uh, just want to give a thanks to everyone who follows this. Uh, I'm surprised that anyone watches these vlogs um, on a regular basis, but it's pretty much just wanted to record video while I'm at the range just to document all the crap that I do. Um, just all the shooting that I do and 
what I'm into as far as uh, the various disciplines or, you know, f informal type of shooting that I like to partake in. So just want to share that with everyone out there and maybe you find something interesting and want to try it out for yourself. Uh, but I anticipate this will be the last range vlog of 2017. So until then, have a happy new year, be safe, um, and I wish you the best New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and, and the best start for your 2018. Uh, anyways, that's the end for this range vlog. Today is December 28th, Thursday at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next year.